listening to Good Morning Gwinnett, a division of Noise Media Network, hosted by Audrey Bell Kearney, sharing stories about people and places around beautiful Gwinnett County and beyond. Monday through Thursday at 10 a.m. Southern Living at its best. Good morning, good morning, good morning, all my Gwinnishas out there in Gwinnett land and all of you around the world listening to the sound of my voice. It is another beautiful day here in Gwinnett County, 44 degrees going up to a high of 53 and look like we're going to get an early spring because look like Beauregard Lee did, did not see his shadow, which means that we have an early spring coming, but the other one, okay, so he has like this long name, Pixu Swanee something up in Pennsylvania. Yeah, they got more cold. But let me tell y'all something. The day the North don't have like a long winter, I'll be surprised. Like, the, I know it's like this whole thing. If the ground, if the groundhog sees his shadow, you got more cold. If he doesn't see his shadow, you got early spring. I don't ever, I don't ever recall an early spring ever up North. And I've lived my whole life up there almost up North. So anyway, we're going to have an early spring. And so our temperatures are already going to the until the spring like stage so we've been in the 50s all week um and today won't be any different 53 is gonna be a high today beautiful 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 Ooh, as y'all can tell i feel a lot better today i felt my my side was killing me yesterday and i didn't know what was wrong so i went to the doctor and they said you know want to go check get your check for kidney stones i'm like oh god now i gotta tell y'all i I have to tell you, I love tea. And, you know, there's a saying that tea is bad for you when you drink too much of it. I drink nothing but water and tea, but more tea than water. So that's my fault. That's my fault. So I'm trying to, I'm, I was like, okay, I got to do better. I got to drink more water. Anyway, I got to get an ultrasound, make sure everything is okay, you know, because you never know. I was in pain all yesterday, and I'm still in a little bit of pain, but not as much as I was yesterday. I was in pain so much I had to take a pain pill um, that helped the pain subside, but I still have a little pain, but not as much as I had yesterday. Because yesterday I was pretty miserable. So as soon as I got finished talking to y'all, I was out the door to the doctor because I was like, okay, I can't get anything done when I feel like this. I cannot get anything. And I really didn't. I didn't get much of anything done. I had a, I had a board meeting last night. And after I did that, that was tough to sit through. And after I did that, I just crashed. So not last night, yesterday evening at 530 that was my last meeting for the day. And after I did that, I pretty much crashed. But I feel better today. I feel a lot better. Anyway, let's get on with this show today. It's February 2nd. Yes, the second day of February. It's also open portal day. So my daughter, I should have brought her in. I should have brought her into the show so she could tell y'all about open portal day. So apparently today is the day. I'm going to tell you what she told me. She's my guru. So, you know, I go to her for all my um, uh, manifesting wisdom and 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 information so she said today is an open portal so you need to write now all on what you need to get a sheet of paper this is what i was told this morning at 7 30. get a sheet of paper on one side of the paper right now all the things you're grateful for and on the other side of the paper right now all the things you want to manifest in your life because it's an, it is an open portal day and then once you write those things down i think you're supposed to burn it i need to double check with her like what you know what let me let me send her a text real quick because i don't know what you're supposed to do with the paper after you write down what you want um so let me sit down so i'm asking her what let me it'll probably be easy if i just say it hey i'm on the show right now what do you supposed to do with the paper after you put down what you want what you're grateful for and what you want to manifest do you burn the paper or do you keep the paper all right text me back all right so i just sent her a text message because i don't know what you're supposed to do with the paper after after you write down the things you're grateful for and the things you want to manifest. I don't know what you're supposed to do with the paper. I, she told me that. So I got. I need to know that. So I'm going to tell y'all. When she when she texts me back, I'm going to tell y'all. So she's my guru. She's heavily into manifestations and all of that good stuff that I love, which is crazy. Okay, now she's calling me. Now, I said, text me. All right, listen. I'm on the show live. So go ahead. Tell the people what they need to do. Okay. you desire or you plan to manifest into your life. 
that is all you're doing. You're not going to burn it. You're not going to do anything. You are just planning. You are not manifesting. February 3rd and February 4th are the days that you want to manifest, right? So today we're just putting it out to the universe, but we are not feeling the emotion. That is the difference between manifest manifesting and planning. Manifesting comes with the emotion. Planning is just what it is. You don't feel anything. And I know it's kind of hard to resist not to feel it when you are writing it down, but try your hardest not to because we're going to do that tomorrow and on, uh, and on Friday. So that's it. That's all you got to do. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. I told him that you're my guru. And so I'm glad you cleared that up because I totally messed that up. I had a manifesting writing and manifesting day. So thank you for clearing that up for you're us. You're welcome. Anytime, anytime. Well, y'all have a great day. Be blessed. All right. So thank you, sister. So that's so that's my baby, y'all. That's my that's my she keeps me on point. So I'm glad I, I will, I'm glad I sent her the voicemail because I, I just said y'all totally messed up, right? Totally messed up. Anyway, write down what you're grateful for on one side, 22 things you're grateful for, and 22 things you want to manifest. Just write them down. And then on tomorrow and Friday, you're going to manifest it. All right? All right, let's get on with this show. So listen, today is February 2nd. It's also National Girls and Women in Sports Day. Show them some love. Of course, it's National Groundhog Day, so we're gonna get an early um we're gonna get an early spring here in Georgia. Sorry, rest of the world. It's national it's National Tater Tot Day. Let me tell y'all something. So last Thursday, y'all know I bowl in the league on Thursday, right? So last Thursday, and a lot of times I, I by the time I get to the bowling bowling alley, I have not eaten anything. I have not eaten anything, so I'm hungry. And so the bowlers next to us had a plate of tater tots. And I was like, so I told Georgia, I said, man, Georgia, them tater tots look good. So we were trying to go back and forth. Do we want to order chicken wings? Or do we want to order nachos? And I was trying to figure out, do I want to order chicken wings? I didn't want to order chicken wings. I was trying to go, trying to figure out, did I want to order tater tots because they look so good or nachos? Now, here's the thing. The nachos probably was much better for me because it was chicken nachos, which I, when I eat the nachos and the chicken, I don't eat a lot. The tater tots, I probably would have ate that whole little bowl of potato tots, which is probably not good for me. So I, I chose not to get the tater tots. As good as they looked, I was like, oh, I'm not going to get those. They were fried. They were fried perfectly. I was like, oh, my goodness, they look good. But anyway, today's National Tater Tot Day. So if you like tater tots, go ahead and knock yourself out. But listen, don't eat too many because they are carbs. Let me say that again. Do not eat too many tater tots because they are carbs. It's also National Heavenly Hash Day. Have no idea what that is. I can only assume that has something to do with corned beef hash, hash browns, some kind of hash. Those are the only two hashes I know, corned beef hash and hash browns. I like corned beef hash by Harmel. Harmel, you owe me money for that. I'm just saying, I shouted you out. I need some money. I need y'all to shoot me a check. Audrey at MsMsBoss.net. That's my PayPal. Audrey at MsBoss.net. I need y'all to shoot me a PayPal for that, uh, Harmel. Because that's the only corned beef hash I like, y'all. Like, I'll eat corned beef hash. And I only started eating corned beef hash about five years ago. Because I used to look at them like, ugh, I can't eat that. It looks like dog food. And then I tasted it. And I'm like, oh, that actually tastes pretty good. I'm weird like that. I, like, I started eating a lot of the things that I eat when I got older. I didn't eat stuffing or dressing. I used to wouldn't eat that. I didn't eat that till like, later in life. Um, I will eat potato salad. And I, I really started eating that probably about five years ago. Um, but I don't say, Hey, we should make some potato salad. Not, you know, like that's when, when they make it, I'll eat it. Um, I really don't eat macaroni and cheese, but I will eat it. And I just started eating that about five years ago. I definitely do not eat spaghetti. Like I just don't like spaghetti for some strange reason. It's just the weirdest thing. And I, and I don't like rice unless it's in sushi. I know I'm weird like that. All right, let's get on with these horoscopes brought to you by Noted Astrologer Micah Thyssen for today, February 2nd. We're going to kick it off like we always do, and that is with Aries. Your personal situation is fluctuating. Take your emotional partner. Talk to your emotional partner about your intentions. Friends and relatives may not understand your needs. Listen here, Aries, you got to talk to that person. Tell them about your intentions. They can't read your mind. You need to tell them. Yep. I know sometimes people think you can read read their minds. Like, how am I supposed to know what you're thinking if you don't tell me? How am I supposed to know what your intentions are if you don't share them with me? You gotta share. You gotta share Aries. Okay. Otherwise, that that personal situation you're in is gonna fluctuate because they're trying to figure out what it is you want and they don't know. Taurus, you will be encouraged to get involved in money making ventures. Yes, watch it back though. Watch it back. Secret affairs will only lead to deception. Don't give your heart too readily. Listen here, listen here, listen here. 
First, I want to talk about the money-making ventures. I know you want to get involved with these money-making ventures. If it's if it sounds like it's too good to be true, Taurus, nine times out of ten, it is too good to be true. So don't fall for the okie doke. I'm just trying to help you out. Take your time, learn what you need to learn. Money making ventures could be very lucrative, but they could also bust your wallet wide open and leave it empty. So watch yourself. Now, the secret affairs, if it's a secret, Taurus, you shouldn't be doing it. That's all I'm saying on that. You're going to dump your heart out to somebody in this secret affair and it's going to get ripped out of your chest. I know that sounds scary, right? I need you to be scary. I need you to be scared. Because what you're doing, you shouldn't be doing, and you're going to give your heart, and it's going to get busted wide open, just like your wallet. I know. I'm, yeah, I can tell I feel better today, right? Yeah, that's what happens when I feel better. I slept good. Whew, when you take a pain pill, you can sleep good. That pain was kicking my tail yesterday. I took that pill. My brother texted me this morning said, how you feel? I said, I feel much better. Because my brother came. Like, every time I get sick, if my husband don't bring me something, my brother brings me something. And I don't get sick very often, but here lately, I've been having all kinds of issues. And so my brother came over yesterday and brought me some Metamucil and some Pepto-Bismol. And I was, he was like, just take that. It's probably going to make you feel better. It probably did. My daughter gave me a remedy. My husband gave me some pain pills. I was all like, after I took all that stuff, I, I feel better. I'm not going to even front. Thank you to all of y'all. My husband, Franklin, my brother, Marion, my daughter, Dominique. Everybody gave me something yesterday to make me feel better. And my Uncle David was checking in on me. So thank you. Love y'all. Gemini, you can take advantage of opportunities if you are quick to make a move. Go out with close friends who understand your situation and your needs. You can make excellent, excellent career choices if you are open to opportunities that exist. The key word there, Gemini, is being open to opportunities. Sometimes you have to be open to opportunities to get the best opportunity for you. If you're closed off and you, you want to do things the same way you've always done them, you're afraid to step outside of your comfort zone, you can miss out on some really great opportunities. So you need to be open to opportunities if you want to get that, that excellent career that you've been searching for. Okay? All right, cool. Cancer, promote your ideas now. Now is the time. Here's the thing. Write them down. Write them down today and then, then, then manifest them tomorrow. Y'all just heard my guru just say, her name is Dominique, by the way, y'all. She called herself Dolly. So, check, by the way, check out her, her show over on YouTube. Dolly Hagler is the name on YouTube. She got a show called Dating Amari. And it's about all the horrible dates she's going on. It's hilarious. I made my debut. So go to, go to YouTube backslash Dolly Hagler. D-O-L-L-Y-H-A-G-L-E-R. Check her out. She writes. She's a producer. This is That was her first time producing her own show. She's been in movies and shows before. First time producing and, and acting in her own. She just told me yesterday. Was it yesterday or the day before? Said, I'm going to be a producer. I'm not going to act in my next. After she finished this series right here, she's going to just produce. So that's exciting. She said she says she's strong as she thinks as a, produ as a producer and a director, which is cool. Listen, when you know your strength, you make things happen. Mine is running my mouth. Did you had you figured it out yet? Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, cancer, promote your ideas. You may want to take a look at the direction your life is going in. Yes, yes, yes. Assist a relative or good friend by setting a budget for them. Somebody needs your help in managing their money. I know they probably think they don't, but let me just say this, cancer. I know you want to help. But unless they ask you to help them to, to create this budget, there's nothing you're going to be able to do for them. So you can suggest it, but don't feel some kind of way if they say, I don't need no budget. Because that's normally what people say, I don't need no budget. And if you really looked at the money you blow, you were like, I need a budget. I did that one time. Matter of fact, now my number's in my head. I pretty much know all the money. I'm a numbers person. I always, ha always have been. But I put it on paper one time, and I found out that I spent a lot of money on magazines i love magazines i got a box of them i don't read them as much as i used to because i'm always so busy but i used to love buying magazines it was my it was my guilty pleasure and so i looked at my i was i was with a group called the queens of finance and i looked at my numbers and i'm like oh my god i did not realize i spent that much money on magazines you know people go to starbucks and buy coffee i was buying magazines like that but but more about, about probably like the same like about four or five a week yeah, because you know you go to the you go to the bookstore, they got a ton of magazines in there. You start spending six dollars, seven dollars, because magazines are not two ninety nine no more. That's the one you get out the grocery store. You know, like the little one at the counter, that's like two ninety nine. You go to the bookstore, you buy the magazines, magazines, they like five ninety nine, six ninety nine. 
You do that two or three times a week, you're going to spend almost $200 on just magazines. I'm trying to tell you now. Leo, all your energy should be directed into money-making opportunities. Don't let others bully you into get agreeing with them. You will have original ideas for ways to make extra money. It's a money day for you, Leo. You got some original ideas, right? Put that energy into the money-making opportunities. Here's the thing. There really aren't any original ideas. There are new twists on old ideas, which makes them original. So don't go out there trying to think of something brand new. Go out there and see what it is that you can be passionate about that you can make better. Let me say that again. You don't have to go out there and re recreate the wheel. Find a problem that you're passionate about and make it better. Make the solution better to that problem. That becomes your money-making idea okay there are really no original ideas not for real somebody had an idea they just didn't act on it that's the thing you may have an idea that you're sitting on and somebody has the same idea they're gonna act on it like, oh my god i thought about that years ago you're taking too long you're moving too slow i'm just trying to help somebody get some fire under them stop sitting on your great ideas virgo you'll be overly sensitive today aren't they always Complete those hobbies you started a long time ago. You can anger others quickly today. Avoid overspending on items for your home. Yeah, Virgos are super sensitive, right? I know quite a few of them, and they're a little sensitive. Now, they can be rough, but their feelings hurt so easily. And here's the crazy thing about Virgo. You don't even know you to hurt their feelings because they just you hurt them, and then they just hold it in. Or they make up these stories. Like, they, they think that you... You, you would, I ain't gonna even get into them. Anyway, I'm going to a song. I'll be right back after that song to give you more of the horoscopes brought to you by Noted Astrologer Micah Thyssen. Stay tuned. <laughs> Keep on getting much darker Even when I'm 
welcome back, welcome back. It's your girl Audrey Bell Kearney giving you the daily horoscopes brought to you by noted astrologer Michael Thais. I'm going to pick it up with Libra. Pleasure trips will, will induce exciting and passionate encounter, encounters with those of foreign extraction. Oh, that sounds dangerous and sexy. You can expect to be passionate, to have a passionate time if you go out with someone you are romantically interested in. Don't back down, but don't ignite the situation. All right, so listen, you're going to have some pleasure trips that's that's going to in some 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 passionate encounters with those of foreign extraction. That sounds like a that sounds like a trip to a foreign land and you got to run for your life and y'all fall in love on the on the way out trying to escape. That's what that sounds like, right? Foreign extraction. Anyway, um, you can expect to have a passionate time with someone you're romantically interested in. I hope so, because here's the thing: it's hard to be, it's hard to have anything passionate when you're not, when you don't find that person attractive, or you're not romantically interested in them. I don't know about all that. Scorpio, try to find another time to present work or ideas today. You will be on a rampage today. Oh God, Scorpio, what's wrong with you? You need to be careful not to make promises that you can't fulfill. Listen, don't make promises that you can't keep. It's only going to make you look bad. And why are you on a rampage? Take a deep breath. Go outside and meditate. Woosa, do something. Being on a rampage is bad energy. Put out bad energy, get bad energy back. That's all I'm trying to help you, help you understand, Scorpio. Sagittarius, organization will be the key to avoiding discord in your family. And stopping the fuse. Some of your new friends may not be that trustworthy. Now's a good time to ask for favors. All right, watch these new friends. Everybody that calls themselves a friend ain't a friend, Sagittarius. Watch your new friends. Yep, may not be that trustworthy. Watch your back. Keep your business to yourself. Keep them out your business. I didn't say business. I said business. Keep them out your business. I'm just trying to help you out. Capricorn, focus on forming business partnerships. Stick to doing things that will make you a better person, both physically and mentally. If you can put some work into your home improvements, you should. Now, here's the thing. Focus on forming business partnerships. This is what I will say to that, Capricorn. Make sure everybody know their roles and they agree to those roles. Because here's what will happen. If you don't know your role and your partners don't know their roles, everybody assuming that everybody know their roles, that is a... That is a recipe for a disaster. So put it on paper. This is what I'm responsible for. This is what you're responsible for. We are all responsible for something to get to this one goal. Put the goals down because if you don't know what the bullseye is, you can't get to the bullseye. The bullseye, right? Put the bullseye on the paper. That's the goal. Here's the goal. These are the steps we got to get to the goal. I'm good at doing these things. I suck at this. You're good at doing these things, but you suck at this. You do the things you're good at. I do the things I'm good at. We're going to find somebody to do the things that we suck at. That's how you do it. I wish I had known that years ago. I know now. So now I try to find people that's good at these things, good at these things, because I suck at both of those, but I'm good at this part. And so that's why I'm having a, I'm hiring a VA to help me go to the next level because I know what I suck at. I had to sit down and think about what do I need help with? And I got certain things that I totally suck at and I'm okay with that. I've tried it. I don't, I'm not good at it. I know how it's supposed to work, but I'm not good at it. There are people out there much better at those things than I am. I did an interview on Sunday with a VA. I'm excited about working with the VA. So that's exciting. All right, Capricorn, Aquarius. Pleasure trips will be favorable and bring about possible romance. Okay. Someone you live with will be quite unreasonable today. You'll be in the mood for entertainment. Okay, so here's the thing, Aquarius. While that person is being unreasonable at home, go out and entertain yourself. You ain't got to sit home and listen to them being acting silly. They want to be unreasonable and have an attitude. You leave them home and then you go out and have some fun. Then you come back and go to bed. Now, listen, if you're in a relationship, you might want to think all that through first. Okay, I'm just trying to help you out. Don't listen to me and be like, well, that lady, she, I'm going out because, you know, that's what the, the horoscope lady said. No, no, no. You got to come back and live with these people. I'm just talking. So here's a disclaimer, Aquarius. Go out at your own risk. That's all I'm saying. That's a disclaimer. Go out at your own risk. All right, cool. Last but not least, my fellow fish Pisces, travel or short trips will be probable will be probable will probably be your best outlet 
go out with friends, make plans to mix business with pleasure, dinner with clients or business associates should be successful. Oh, that sounds amazing. That whole fish. I don't know about you, but that whole thing sounds amazing. Travel or short trips could be, would probably be your best outlet. Sounds good. Go out with friends. Sounds good. Mix, make plans to mix business with pleasure. Ooh, sounds sexy. Um, dinner with clients or business associates should be successful. Now, let me say this. Let me say this. Don't eat where you play when it comes to the money. Now, business and pleasure, I don't know what that all means, but when it comes to my clients and my business, yeah, we ain't missing no, ain't no pleasure in there unless we just chit chat. That's my money. Don't play with the money. All right, cool. All right, fish, have a great day, y'all. So listen, that's all the horoscopes I got for you today. I'll be back again tomorrow at 10 a.m. to bring you more of the horoscopes brought to you by noted astrologer Michael Thais. And now let's get on with some news you can use. All right, so right now, um, children under the age of five may be getting ready to get a get the vaccine. Yeah, and so I'm just wondering how many people are going to let their children under five get the vaccine. Now, that's a little scary for me. That's really scary. I have a granddaughter. She's three. And I told y'all my horrible story about how my whole family got COVID and how I lost my mom because of that. And it was because the baby probably was a carrier. Now, and she was, at that time, she was one. She had not turned two yet. She was turning two in a few weeks. Um, so I'm just one. My daughter says she's not going to let the baby get the vaccine. And I'm okay with that, you know. Um, I'm vaccinated. We're all vaccinated. I'm boosted. I will probably take, because I don't know. I, I just, for me, you know, because I want to make sure that I can be as long as I can with my with my family. I don't know about the baby, though, y'all. I'm still kind of tossed up. My daughter already said she's not letting the baby get the vaccine. But anyway, children younger than five in Georgia could start getting their coronavirus vaccination as soon as the end of this month. Yeah, if the FDA approves an emergency authorization request expected to be filed today, yesterday, no, What's the day? Today is Wednesday. Yesterday, they, they expected that to be filed yesterday um, by Pfizer and its partner, BioNTech. Um, they could start getting that vaccine as soon as the end of this month, if that's approved. If the FDA says yes, it's a go, then they can start giving out vaccines to children between under the age of five starting the end of this month. Um, it's going to be a two-shot vaccine for children under five. It will be the first vaccine available to very young children. Um, older children, ages five to twelve, they're already being vaccinated, and and you know five and from five on up is being vaccinated. Children under five have not been vaccinated yet. The Georgia Department of Health and um, Public Health seven-day moving average of cases among children one to four was three hundred and eighty as of January. So they have been kind of tracking the kids. So between the ages of one to four. As of January 31st, 380 kids between the ages of eight and, uh, one and four had it. For children ages five to nine, the average number was 672 cases. And then from, for, for infants younger than one, the average was 117 cases. That's crazy, y'all. But here's the thing. These people are giving these to the baby. So if, if we protect ourselves from the virus, then we can't give it to the kids. See, that's my thing. Like, I'm going to protect myself so I don't give it to the baby. The problem is the baby go to the daycare. That's the problem. Because that's the problem. That's what happened. The baby went to the daycare in December. December 18th, the daycare called and said, oh, someone had it in the school, but they weren't in your child's classroom. And then by December 25th, we were all sick. And by December 27th, we were really sick. So that's the crazy part. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. How you feel about that? Y'all shoot me a message. Shoot me a message. Go over, go over to Good Morning Gwinnett. Shoot me a message. Audrey at Good Morning Gwinnett. How you feel about getting the kids vaccinated if they're under under the age of five? Some people are saying no, even, even if they're five. Like, nah, I'm not doing it. And I kind of get it. Like, it's so scary. But oh, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, let's keep moving. So Jackie Robinson, Jackie Robinson was the first black man to play Major League Baseball. I think I had to say that in a when I was younger or something in school. And I may be saying it wrong, but I think I said it right. It was along those lines. And so, um, you know, he was from Cairo, Georgia, and they had a monument of him standing up in Cairo, Georgia. And somebody last year drove by and shot the monument up. Oh, my God. It's some, it's some sick people in this world. And I guarantee you they don't think they're sick. There are some sick folk in this world. Like, I heard a lady die yesterday or day before yesterday because somebody shot her because of road rage. Killed her. 
driving. And I tell my daughter, because my daughter just be in the car fussing. I'm like, listen, just drive. Let the cars get out of the way. I've learned my brother too. He's like, oh, these people drive so like, just drive. They drive horrible. But people are so nuts right now. They're just nuts. So why would you just drive by and shoot up the statue? Because you're evil. They're evil, crazy people. They are. Anyway, the Major League Baseball replaced the monument in, in, um, in the hometown of Jackie Robinson and Cairo. They replaced it, and they also put two of them in there. So they put one um, one downtown uh, uh, Cairo, and then they put one at a, at a library in Cairo. So they re they replaced it. They gave 40, a $40,000 gift to the Georgia Historical Society, um, which replaced both of those monuments. I, I tell you, boy, hopefully they, they won't shoot those up. Just evil, crazy people. I just, oh, I just, you know, if if you think about it, if people weren't so evil and crazy, we would be in a, we would live in a beautiful world. But I guess it's just wishful thinking, because we got crazy, evil people all over the place, and they just do stuff. Thank God we got more sane, nice people than crazy, evil people. Thank God, because we would just be a mess, for real. All right, I'm going to a song. I'll be right back after this one to give you more of the rundown about what's going on in and around Gwinnett County and beyond. Stay tuned. <laughs> It's your girl, Audrey Bell Kearney, giving you a daily rundown about what's going on in and around Gwinnett County. So they are having an, um, their annual Greater Atlanta Virtual HBCU College Fair. So that stands for Historical Black Colleges and University. So if you know someone who's ready to go to college and they want to go to a historical black college or university, there's a fair, a virtual uh, college fair going on this Saturday from 10 a.m. This starting this Friday, at, uh, February the 4th, from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. And Saturday from... Uh, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. 
For more information about that, they can go to www.hbcucf.org. That's H in, as in Henry, B as in boy, C as in Charlie, U as in under, C as in Charlie. F is in frank.org, O-R-G. So if you know someone who's interested in going to an HBCU, they're having a college fair this Friday and Saturday. Friday is from 2 to 6. Saturday is from 10 to 3. This is an opportunity for you to find out more information about over 40 black, uh, historically black colleges and university, um, what it takes to get into one, how much it costs to get one. Is it even worth going to college? Because some people are saying it may not be for some folks. It's free. It's open to the public. Anyone can attend. Again, that's www.hbcucf.org. So if you're interested in going to a historically black college or university, this is a chance to get your um, questions answered. There's going to be 40 plus uh, representatives there from the colleges and universities so you can get your college questions answered. Woo! So listen, I normally talk, I try to talk about politics on Sundays on Popcorn and Politics, me and my co-host Derek J. Wilson, but I had to talk about this because, you know, the politics is going to be heating up real soon. Um, once people start to qualify next month, which is in March, they have to qualify. The people that qualify, after they qualify, then it's on and popping towards the primaries and then after that to the general election. So we talk about politics every Sunday at 1 p.m. live. Derek and I talk about politics. We talk to up-and-coming politicians. We talk to politicians already sitting in a seat. Last week, we talked to uh, State Representative Matthew uh, Wilson. The week before that, we talked to State Representative Donna Cloud. Both Donna McLeod, both of them are in seats right now in government, but they're they're looking to like up it. So Matthew is running for insurance commissioner for the state of Georgia. Donna McLeod is running for Congress for the state of Georgia. And so they're both in there. And, and Donna is running against Lucy she will be running so she said so they said she said i'm not running against them so i don't i don't really know how to say that you're not running with them so you're running against them um but anyway stacy abrams and i'll talk about Donna in a second stacy abram has raised 9.2 million dollars since she entered into the race in december 9.2 million since she entered the race now here's the thing because she's raised that much money doesn't mean she's going to win because when she ran against Brian Kent in, in, in the 2018 election, she had raised 27.4 million and he raised 21.4. The difference is he stole the election because he, so, because he was, a, he was over, he was over voting. He, the, 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 the position that Brad Travis, what is his name? Raffensperger has right now. That was Kent position and he was running. So that was totally unfair. So of course she lost because he stole it. This year, he's not over that, and hopefully Raffensperger can, can remain neutral. He did pretty good when it came to Trump, I think, even though he's been kind of flip-flopping a little bit about that whole crap. Um, hopefully, he can re remain respectable and, and neutral when it comes to the voting um, and the new election coming up because Stacey's either going to be going against Kemp or she's going to be going up against Purdue, one of the two. Um, right now, she's raising a ton of money, um, to, to for this race and she needs to because she has to run against gerrymandering a crooked politician oh my god she has a lot to run against so you know she's gonna need all the money she can to raise to 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 to, to run this election so she's she's raised 9.2 million since last um since last since 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 december and we're gonna talk more about that on sunday on popcorn and politics so just be, be sure to tune in live you can listen to the show on American One Radio. You can also listen to the show on LinkedIn Live, YouTube Live, Facebook Live, and Roku Live. Yes, for Roku, you got to download the the uh, Noise Media Network app from the from the Roku store. And then once you do that, click on Popcorn and Politics and listen live because we go live on Roku. Yeah. So anyway, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a race because right now, you know. Um, Herschel Walker is trying to jump in there and throw his... He's trying to run for U.S. Senate against Raphael Warnock. I can't see him winning. Like, ew. Um, but, hey, what do I know? <laughs> Worst things have happened, and I didn't think they would. Anyway, let's talk politics on Sunday. But I got to tell y'all this. So, Lucy McBath, I got to say this, though. I know I'm talking politics on Sunday. I just got to say this part because it falls right in line with Stacey. So, right now, she is raising... She has raised more money than Carolyn Bardot. Now, it's still early, right? It's still early. Lucy McBath was in, uh, she was in District 6, but because of the gerrymandering of the maps drawn by the, by the Republicans, 
now she has to run up against Carolyn Bordeaux um, for the 7th Great Congressional District. Not only is she running up against Carolyn, State Representative Donna McLeod is also in that race running against the, one of them because they, they're going to have to figure out, between the three of them, they're going to have to figure out you know, who's going to be the, the nominee coming forward for January, for November. Right now, um, Lucy McBath has raised um, 745000 during the fourth quarter of last year, whereas Carolyn Bordeaux um, raised 430000 Now, it doesn't matter about the money for real. We've, we, we know that there are some politicians out there who raised a ton of money and still didn't win. They had a lot of money available and they still didn't win. So we we that doesn't really matter. It's just it's just interesting to see like how many people are supporting these these uh candidates and how much money they're throwing behind them. So none of that matters until the votes are in. Let me just say that it doesn't matter. All right. Okay, I'm going to another song. I'll be right back after this song to give you more of the rundown about what's going on in and around Gwinnett County. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. I love about this show is being able to play music. I love music, y'all. And then you know what's crazy? I don't play it at night before I go to bed because I won't go to bed. So I play it during the day. I play it when I go to lunch. Because otherwise I'll be singing all night long in the bed. My poor husband like he probably be like, shut the H up. He don't he don't say that though. He don't he don't do none of that kind of stuff. He probably want to, because I'd be just laying up there just singing. So I don't I'm not a I'm not a b hole. So I was like, you know what? Let me just not play music when I lay in the bed because otherwise I will be singing to the wee hours of the morning. And he'd probably be like, this chick, no, I got to get up early and she landed for singing. I have done that. So that's why I know. And I was like, oh, that sucks. I shouldn't do that. So I, I don't do it. But I like to do it. I like to do it, but I, I won't do it anymore. Yep. So, oh, my God. So there's just a lot going on. Um, There's a lot going on everywhere, y'all. 
everywhere. Anyway, Gwinnett County has planted a $25 million expansion of the one-stop center of Centerville facilities with federal funds that's going to be used to pay for the construction. So I was in a meeting uh, about about two weeks ago with the commissioners and they with one of the commissioners and he was telling us about this the revamping or the remodeling or the expansion of the Gwinnett, the one stops in uh one stop in centerville it sounds like it's going to be beautiful um the way he explained it to us i was like oh this is amazing it's going to have an entrepreneur center in there kind of like the one downtown at lawrenceville which is pretty nice um, but anyway, residents of Southern Gwinnett County may be getting increased access to public health, mental health, and early learning services in their backyard within the next two years. County officials joined U.S. Representative Carolyn Bardot on Monday to announce a $25 million expansion of the one-stop Centerville facility. Construction of the expansion will be paid for with the American Rescue Plan Act funds. County funds are also being used on the project. So from what I heard in the meeting that I was in personally with one of the commissioners with Commissioner Jasper Watkins, it's going to be a beautiful facility. It's going to be able to facilitate um, help for parents. It's going to be able to facilitate help for entrepreneurs. Um, it's going to have um, be able to do health screenings and things like that. Head Start, all kinds of great things for the community. So expect that to be taking place pretty soon over the next two years. County officials said construction is expected to begin um, by the end of the year, and the goal is to have it open by 2024. So that's and the way I heard it, it, it sound very, it sounds like it's gonna be very nice. So it's gonna be a huge, um, a huge asset to the community. It's gonna be about 42. It's gonna be expanded to about 42,000 square feet, which is a lot of space. Like I don't know if y'all know, but that's a lot of space. I went into a building with 25,000 square feet. I was like, oh. And we were looking at the building to for the for the chamber, and I'm like, what in the heezy are we gonna do with all this space? It was big, y'all. So forty two thousand is almost twice the size of what I was standing in. So that's a lot of space. But they need a lot of space to do a lot of great things. So that's cool. Snellville is accepting applications for the thirty first session of the Citizens uh, Police Academy. Yep. I went through the I went through the Gwinnett Citizens Academy 101. It was one of the best things I could have done here in Gwinnett County. So they had the police academy pretty much in all the towns, I think. I know for sure they have it in in in, in um in Snellville and I think Swanee. But anyway, Snellville officials are taking applications for the next session of the academy. <clears throat> the police department will accept applications um up until March the 4th. Right up until Mar March the 4th. So if you want to be a part of that, it's a 10-week program. You're going to learn all about the city's police department and what, what it does and how it operates. I think it's amazing. I didn't go through the police academy, but I did go through Gwinnett Citizens Academy 101, which in which had a portion of, had a, set, a session where we went to the police office, the police department, and learned a lot about what they do. And when I tell y'all, and I say this all the time because I, had, I got a new respect for police officers who go out there and put their lives on the line for us every day to protect our, our safety and our families and our businesses. There was a simu they have a simulation at the police department. It's it's a room and it has a huge screen in it. And they they were trying to show us what it's like when you're in a situation where there's an assailant assailant coming towards you and you have to try to protect yourself and anybody that's around you. So they put this big screen on to do the simulation. They put the gun in my hand and they told me to shoot for his leg. Now, and everybody in the room, even people that think they could shoot, which they told to shoot for the leg. What I found out is that shooting for someone's leg could kill them, kill them quicker if you shoot them in the, in, the, in, the, in the stomach, right? Because if you hit an artery in the leg, they could be bleed out really quick. And not only that, you have a better chance of missing shooting at a leg versus shooting up a mass. So I learned a lot from that, but I also learned that when you're in a situation like that, now I was in a simulated situation, which means there was no real person coming at trying to attack me, but I was freaking out. The adrenaline was going as if there was a real assailant trying to attack me. Can you imagine being in a situation where there is a real assailant? Let me tell you a quick story. My uncle passed away in 2009. He had a house over in, in Newark, New Jersey. And um, when he passed, he, and he lived by himself. So he passed away. Nobody was living in the house. So the neighbor called us and said, hey, we think somebody broke into the house. And so, you know, I freaked out. And I said, you know what? Let me go over to the house. So I called my friend 
who is the mother of my two godsons. I said, hey, and, they, and she lived really close by. I said, meet me at the house. I think somebody's in the house. And so she said, okay, so her and, and one of my godsons um, met me at the house. So we, we met up at the house around the same time. So my friend and I were standing on the porch, on the front porch. My godson had went to the park, which was across the street, to look for a police officer. As we were standing on the porch, she was standing on one side of the porch. I was standing on the other side of the porch with the front door open. The man walked up out of the basement of the house. Because in Jersey, most of the houses have basements. Like, that's not a real big thing down here in Georgia. But in Jersey, that's like a thing. Like, you got a house, you got a basement. The man walked up out the basement and walked right out past us on the front porch. We both froze. He didn't say anything. He didn't do anything. We were froze solid as a rock. If he wanted to shoot both of us off the porch, he could have. We we couldn't do a thing. We froze. And he walked right on past us and walked right down the steps and walked right down the street. And as he was walking down the street, my cousin saw how frightened we were. He was My cousin was walking down the street because he lived on the other end. He was like, what's the matter? I was like, he, he broke into the house. And my cousin went and got the guy and made him come back and sit on the porch till the cops came. When I tell y'all, you don't know what it's like until you're in that situation. You don't know. So when you go through this, the smell of the police academy, right? The Citizens Academy, you will get an opportunity to see what I saw, to feel what I felt, and to understand that when they go out there and they put their lives on the line every day, it's 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 it's, it's, it's scary sometimes, and 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 it and it, and it probably could be difficult, and it probably could put a lot of pressure on you. So I, you know, I, I I thank them for doing the work they do for us. I wouldn't want that position. And here's the thing: I was going to be a correction officer. I went through the whole program. I did the psych test. I did everything in Jersey. This one, I was much younger. And I had to do the walk through the prison. And one of them guys was like, <laughs> he pointed to me. He's like, we'll get you when you come in here. And I was like, yeah, not me because I ain't coming. And my mother was like, you're going to look so cute in the uniform. I was like, no, 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 ma'am. I ain't going to look cute at all because I'm not putting the uniform on. That guy was like, I'm going to get you. I was like, yeah, not me. Now, what's crazy is when I got ready to get married, I was I was an entrepreneur and I wanted to have a really big wedding. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go back to work so I can make all this money to have this really big wedding. Well, guess what I went back to work to? I went back to work at the county jail. So I go to work at the county jail. And I'm talking to my husband one night. I worked in the, I worked in medical because that's, that's my background. I had been working in the hospital for over almost nine years. So when I went back to, when I went to work again for my wedding, I went to work at the county jail in the medical, in medical. And one, every night when I would go to work, and I worked the 3 to 11 shift, which I hate that shift. I think it just messes up your day. I went to work. I would go to work at night. And when you go to, I was working at the county jail in Newark. When you go to, when you go to work, you go to jail because they lock you in with everybody else. Them doors locked behind you. Them heavy steel doors. You hear them go click, click right behind you as you walk in. And every night I would go to medical, there was a guy, he would come to medical every night. And he would be at the window licking out his tongue and all this whole crazy stuff. Which freaked me out. So I would go on to my side. I wouldn't look at him. I'd be looking crazy straight ahead. And I'd go to my side and go to my office. This one particular night, I'm in my office with the door open. And the, 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 all the lights go off in the building. Now, I'm talking on the phone to my husband sitting behind the desk. And all the lights go off. Everything just blacked out. And I freaked out. And I jumped up from my desk, hit my hip on the side of the desk. It was killing me. But I was trying to get to the door to close the door. And I said to my husband, oh, my God, oh, my God, the lights went out. I'm freaking out on the telephone. But I, I wasn't married yet. We were, we were about to get married. Let me tell you, after that day, I was like, yeah, we're going to have a small wedding. I quit that job. I was like, yeah, this is too much stress on me. Going to work with the prisons every day and they making faces at me and throwing kisses and licking the wall. I'm like, oh, I was like, yeah, not going to happen. We're going to have a nice little tiny wedding. And we still had a big wedding. Even after I quit. And I quit. I quit the job. I was like, yep, I'm about to quit this job because um, this is scary for me. And I am stressed out right now going to jail every night. So I quit the job. So I quit the job. And even though I quit the job, we still had a big wedding. Like we had 14 people in our wedding party, just a party by itself. And we had 150 people at the wedding. So we still had a big wedding. All right, listen, I'm going to my last song. And when I come back, I'm going to give you my word of inspiration for the day. So stay tuned.
Welcome back, welcome back. So listen, guys, that's all I got for you today. But before I go, I want to give you my word of inspiration. And boy, is it a deep one. Here goes. The only thing worse than being blind is having sight and no vision. Ooh, I read that. I was like, what? Say it again. The only thing worse than being blind is having sight but no vision. Helen Keller said that and she, Helen Keller said that and she was right. She was blind, y'all. But she made a she made she made history. She she people know her name from years ago, and she was blind. There are people that can see, and they have no vision. And the thing about it is, their vision is their vision is cloudy. It's clouded by laziness, because that's pretty much what it is. It's 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 clouded by pessimism, right? It's clouded by lack of self confidence. Because you, we can all have a vision, but it's clouded. And you have to make a decision in your mind to say, you know what? I have a vision for my life, and I'm going to live that vision no matter what. And trust me, no matter what is some big words. They're tough. I get it. Trust me when I tell you, I know no matter what. No matter if I don't have any money. No matter if I don't have any support. No matter if I don't know what the heck I'm doing. No matter what, I'm going to follow this vision. And that no matter what stops a lot of people because no matter what becomes, oh, I can't do it because I'm not good enough. Oh, I can't do it because nobody supports me. Oh, I can't do it because I don't have any money. Oh, I can't do it because I'm a procrastinator. Oh, I can't do it because I'm lazy. That's what no matter becomes, no matter what becomes to a lot of people. For those of us who say no matter what, I'm going to get it done and keep going, we get it done. It may take years, but we get it done. Because it's not that you like vision. Is, is you like the effort to push the vision. We all have the vision. Somebody that you all have, there's something that everybody wants something, right? But the work that it's going to take to push that vision is what stops people. Cause it's take, it takes work to push a vision. Let me just say that again. It takes work to push a vision. And here's the thing. You may not want to push your vision. That's okay. Then don't push it. Do what you want to do. But don't say I, I have a vision and then you don't push the vision and it's not working. It's not working because you're not working. The vision won't work if you don't work. Let me say that again. The vision will not work if you don't work. What is your vision and what are you willing to do about it? So all I got for you this today could have been anywhere in the world, but to spend the last one hour with me and I love and appreciate you to life for that. Be sure to follow me on good, on uh, Facebook at Good Morning Gwinnett, on Instagram at Good Morning Gwinnett, and on the Twitter at GMGwinnett.1. 
the number one. Jim Gwinnett, the number one. If you missed any episodes of this show, be sure to, to go to goodmorninggwinnett.com to listen to the past episodes there. Oh, yeah, check this out, y'all. Y'all know I love the horoscopes, right? <clears throat> so I created a line of, of horoscope zodiac shirts. Go to goodmorninggwinnett.com, buy your zodiac signs right on the front page. Whether you are Aries, Cancer, Pisces, Taurus, Leo, Virgo, Gemini, Scorpio, I'm Capricorn, whoever I left out, Libra, it's a, it's a shirt there for you. So just go to goodmorninggwinnett.com. Some of the shirts are really, really cute. Two of the shirts I did, uh, they're okay. I couldn't think of nothing else for them. But the other ones, I think I think, I think my, my favorite shirt of all is Aries. I think Aries is the prettiest one I got of all. So check them out. Go to goodmorninggwinnett.com. Pick up your Zodiac shirt right off the front page. You ain't even got to click through to the store. Just click on the click on the little the little the scroll bar right there and get your shirt. I got Pisces. Now I created. I'm a Pisces. I created Pisces. It's it's too blue, but I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get me one and I'm gonna show it to y'all. It's so blue though. I couldn't come up with anything else. It was a fish. I didn't want to have a pink fish, even though I could have had a red snapper. I guess I don't know. Anyway, check out the shirts. Also, if you listen to the show on Apple Podcasts, find your favorite two episodes over there. Give them five stars and subscribe to the show. I'll be back again tomorrow at 10 a.m. God willing, stay safe out there, my friends. I love you guys for listening always. And until next time, make it a great day. Bye, y'all. You've been listening to Good Morning Gwinnett. Make sure to tune in Monday through Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time to find out what's happening around Gwinnett. If you like this episode, subscribe now and share with your friends. To learn more about Noise Media Network, visit noisemedia.us.